All right. Uh, good evening, guys. Ken at Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for April 11th, 2023. We'll start with the... Um, there we go. We'll start with the swing portfolio. Uh, as usual, let's start with Alcoa, and we're on the three-minute charts. So, um, let's see, I guess that was last Thursday. We started Alcoa with the PSAR flip uh, near the 10-day low uh, as the Red River bottomed out and was starting to make that roll. So, we put the standard risk on it. It closed well. The next day, yesterday, it closed well. Today, it gapped, sold off a little bit, and closed well. Uh, but then in the last uh, 30 minutes, it rolled over, crossed the, uh, the 10, crossed the 30, hit the PSAR, and I felt like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 R in three days, really two and a half days. That felt pretty good, and I wanted to just capture that, that move. Uh, as is, you know, we get the emergence from out of the Red River here, right when the PSAR is happening. Uh, it makes that break up hard, gets into the summertime, gets us a second leg up, and then starts to decay. And uh, that looks like the outsized move outside the Red River. So that felt like a logical place to just ring the bell for 5R. Plus, we know how to get back in. Uh, if it breaks above today's high I'll be long again looking for the 10-day high uh, maybe with an intermediate level here at the five-day high but um, nothing wrong with making bank and reducing the overnight risk check or hold uh, AI is the uh, uh, AI software company so we tried the Kata 2 yesterday near the close uh, it had a little run up and you know if I were to do that again I'd probably take one R it came all the way back to break even and I'm just holding the same trade um, I, I felt like I let some of that get away today so I uh, I still like it it's still got the Kata 2 in hand you know the Kata 2 pattern is still there and there was an initial surge up, so I'm still in the hypothesis on this trade. But I think that there was a chance to get out right in here that would have been a better 1R exit. Uh, Caterpillar. So Caterpillar was a really st strong short. For, you know, there was a 10-day high. There was the gap and crash. We got three positions into it and exited uh, after a rebound off of the 10-day low. Uh, I missed that move, uh, but today the continuation occurred. It gapped up above the peak of the RL10. So I took that trade with a standard risk, and we're holding about plus two. And uh, there's still plenty of room for this to get up into previous resistance so I like that one that's a 2R win in hand and still holding that overnight uh, Cliff uh, we we got this one the same time we got the uh, like the same day of the Alcoa flip we got the PSAR flip got the second Kata 2 today was a gap up and closed very well so on one unit of risk, we're holding one, two, three, four, five, six R on the first one, three R on the second one. So we're at plus nine. And this is right at the test of the uh, previous peak of the Dragon and the RL10. So if this goes, and if this breaks above the 10-day high, uh, that could be eastbound and down. That could be really nice. Let's take a look at that on a longer term time frame. Yeah, this is still early days 
in this trade. Like the first real test of this is going to be if it can get to this to this price level here. So if this will break above the 10-day high, uh, then the run up to 19 and a half is key. And then if it can break through there, uh, you have a little resistance, a big resistance here at 21. This thing has every reason to get to 21. And this is the 30-day high at 23, way back here. So the Godzilla that this produced has now stabilized. And I want you to notice how that last little that last little uh, reversal took out all the weak hands and then hit the that's the SSC and has been nothing but a rocket ship to the top. Now it's testing here and uh, that's why I'm willing to hold two positions on that overnight on the opportunity to get a big breakthrough. If this breaks above the 10-day high, I'll add a third position. Uh, and then that would look like summer, fall, summer. So one of the reasons I get out of Alcoa is so that I can have this position on uh, with two scoops on the smaller uh, on the smaller company cliff which has less resistance overhead. So I'm, it essentially was reduce risk in Alcoa, take the risk in Cliff, same sector. I don't want to have two companies, which is essentially the same trade. Uh, I want it concentrated on the one that will pay off more. Check or hold. All right, so this one is... Um, this is uh, CVS, and uh, what we had on CVS was this nice emerging dragon slash Kata 2. Uh, we got short on it here. It closed here yesterday. It gapped up and got out of that for a scratch, and then it did nothing all day. So this was a uh, essentially a scratch trade. Dish was no trade. Uh, it is setting up a nice tight uh, sideways quiet channel here though so there could there could be some more movement in either direction we'll stock it not a high priority but it's on the list uh, Devon Energy um, our previous trade was a Kata 2 uh, we played the Kata 2 entry early today it closed well and we're holding about plus one and if it can break above the 10-day high, I'll add a second position. That one feels pretty good. Energy has room to go. Uh, electronic Arts. Uh, yesterday, we took the, like a 1, 2, 3 entry here on a tight risk. Uh, it closed pretty well. We're holding uh, plus 1. It's got to get above today's high, which is also this peak. Uh, to really get some traction. Um, I think there's room for it to go once it does that, if we go back and look a little further. Um, yeah, it has mostly recovered uh, all the pain and suffering of that big gap down. So here is the real return to normalcy is around 130. So if this consolidation in the last five days can resolve to the upside, it's free running up to 130 but it's got to get through this uh, 10 day high so we're we'll give it another day uh, I'm optimistic check or hold uh, emerging markets so uh, two days ago three days ago sorry uh, right at the open we took the PSAR flip it closed well. It had a nice little run-up. Uh, I speculated that the fact that it failed to fail made this a Kata 2. So I took the second position yesterday here. And then today it rewarded with a gap up and a nice strong close. Um, I would not be offended if you took that exit and just made bank on two positions. Because we're holding about one to plus three on the first one 
plus two on the second one. So we're holding five R. What I liked about it was that it had closed above the previous uh, resistance level. So it broke through and then held. So I have reasons to believe that this could con could continue. And, um, you know, we, we are above that last previous strong resistance. So the fact that it was able to clear this suggests that uh, these two price levels are in play, like at 40 and a quarter and 40.75. So there's room for EEM to continue to go, and the MACD is favorable uh, down here. So that all looks good. Uh, Ethereum, I, I think, has broken out. I mean, it's gotten out of all of this. Here was the next leg up, and now it's got a an additional leg up and closed pretty well above 950. Uh, I like it. And uh, got a long way to go. To, I mean, 11 is in sight. Uh, 11 is the next tactical target. And if it can get above 11, look out above. That's come a long way back. Uh, Mexico, EWW. Let's dial back in. So this was uh, three days ago. Just took the standard entry. I mean, it's the same old entry, guys. Harsh winter, finds a bottom, crosses the dragon, PSAR flip, standard risk. There was a kata two we might have taken, but this feels pretty good. You can discount this run up. That's the trend. And that thing is just grinding and going, and we're holding one, two, plus three. And I'm going to have I'm going to move my stop up to the low of the day, and lock in two. And I will add a position if it breaks out above today's high. Simple. Uh, here's the one that I uh, just had no right to expect. So yesterday, you heard me whining about holding my no holding my nose. And uh, taking this little PSAR flip here, finally, when it turned from spring to summer, took it. It did nothing, but we had a nice tight wrist box on it. And there's the gap. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. A seven R gap in our favor. This is maybe the market paying back for the you know the twelve hour adverse gap on Tesla last week. Uh, it ran right up, came back and held and started to resume. So I said why not? Put the second one on. And then I'm holding ten R on the first one and two R on the second one. So that's plus twelve. And uh, I decided to cash that one. I know how to re-enter if it gets above 29, but 12R was too much to um, to treat as a normal gain. That, that was a gift horse, and I uh, uh, made a nice bank on that one. That helps underwrite some of the risk overnight I was having on two positions in Cliff. Um but I will be ready to go back into this one tomorrow. Intel, uh, nothing was busy. Span of control did not fail further today. Uh, IP, this is an international paper, uh, took the gap and it moved one wrist box off the bottom, bought it, it closed well. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it closed here. We were up about plus one right until the last few minutes and then it. So we're holding no lose plus dinner for two. Uh, I'm not. I'm going to move my stop up to here tomorrow. I'm not going to let it go negative. If it gets above here, though, I could add a second position on failure to fail. As it's as long as it is above this 
This is all gravy. So I have not written that one off yet. IYR. Uh, yesterday's um, uh, entry on the PSAR flip, standard risk, off the double bottom, and it rewarded us for taking that risk with 2R. I'm still in it. Uh, it's teasing this resistance level. It's got to go right away or I'm going to get out and try to preserve as much of those 2R as I can. But if it can make a new 10-day high, I'll, I'll add a position. Uh, today took, um, took the uh, regional banks, KRE, on failure to fail. The PSAR was holding. Took the uh, Kata 2 Emerging Dragon, standard risk. It's, it came back and closed basically flat. So I'll give it one more day on spec. It's got to get above this price level here for a second position. Marijuana. Uh, we tried the uh, long yesterday at near the close. It rolled over, took a half an hour loss, took the short here. And then in the last 30 minutes, it collapsed down to here. So we're holding plus one. And if it can break below, say, 520, then this has a ch real chance to get negative. Uh, it only flirted with the summer here and really couldn't even sustain that. So uh, this looks like more pain tomorrow. Clean energy. Uh, held our nose yesterday on the Kata 2, and it rewarded today, and now we're holding 1, 2, 3, almost 4. Happy. Rivian. Uh, yesterday we took the PSAR flip. It's holding 1R. The S&P had a good day today. Treasuries, I took the PSAR flip on failure to fail further. Had the standard risk was wider than the PSAR. I just don't mind. I, I like that extra. Uh, if it can hold, then I have reason to believe it can get back here. And that would give us a potential 3R win. So I like that one as a speculative trade. Tesla just keeps breaking my heart right uh so the um the speculative long which failed here and then we took the one two three uh it closed pretty well today so we're holding one two about three r uh after this loss of minus two Last trade, uh, U.S. Steel. So we had, just like Alcoa and Cliff, we took the PSAR flip. Uh, U.S. Steel, I added the second one here. But because it was not following through as strong as Cliff, I decided to cash U.S. Steel for the one, two, three, four. That's about plus five. So we're, of the three... Uh, metals I cashed Alcoa cashed US Steel for nice gains and we're holding these uh, the overnight position on two on cliff because it's really postured to do well I'm ready to get back into this tomorrow if it gets above the 10 day high that'll be fine I just didn't want to carry the overnight risk um, on that one okay uh, so that does it for the uh, swing trades check or hold Let's go to the sniper trade of the day. Uh, so this is the Turbo and Alcoa. I just, I keep, dan I keep uh, dancing with the one that brung me. So there's the, here was yesterday's close. Here was the gap up. Here's the OR3. Um, the, it gave me a one, two, almost like a one two three entry uh it had moved a wrist box off the low didn't take out the or3 but that was enough potential to get me in so i decided to heck with it let's just get it uh 
grinding, 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 and exiting for about um, 0.6. Check or hold. Kata 2 re-entry. Uh, micro loss. Kata 2 re entry. Scratch. Kata 2 re entry. Micro gain. And that's a, that was enough. So this was pretty much uh, trading for the broker today. Uh, most of the gains were in that, um, was really contained in the gap on the swing trade. And then it just never really could uh, unwind and start going. So uh, we basically got about 0.6 or a 1R-ish out of this one today. Not much else going on with it. <clears throat> Take a look at the traders now. See what they've got. I'm sorry, I thought I had them open. All right, so here's uh, Satya on Tesla. 3.4. Uh, he lets the uh, he lets the you know the first 90 minutes of the day kind of find its level, and then he sees a cut of two, and a chance to get a nice standard risk box on it. Takes half, and then gets short. I'm sorry, takes the exit here for 1.3. Then lets the PSAR break and puts the standard risk on it. 1, 2, 3, cover at the edge of the dragon for 0.7. Uh, takes the next cut of 2 for 0.7. Quick scratch, quick scratch, and then a short for 0.8. So that's 3.4 with uh, only one of the trades being more than 1.3. So that's really taking exactly what the market would give you. That's really well done. Boy, that's a that's an exemplar. Um, and you know that's good because that, it was hard, hard sledding for Woj in uh, Tesla. Uh, here's the one that got away. That would have made a significant difference. And here's one that he didn't take that makes a difference. But Devon Energy, he does, he gets a scratch. Um, he tries the short here, takes the full loss, but then picks up that. There's a cut of two in here for a second position that could have been taken. A couple more scratches for 2.2, .2, which offsets Tesla. Um, then uh, has trouble with the grind here on U.S. Steel. Um, yeah, we stuck around too long on that one. I like that you let it settle down, but I think we've got to be ready for this one here instead of here. That makes a difference. That would have given you a positive day because we are only ended up grinding out minus 0.7 that's pretty good uh i like that you got paid but we gave back over an r on this one and we gave back a lot on this one too i think um take a look at your 
profit captures on NVIDIA on this one. I, I think there's some definite improvements uh, in that one for you. Uh, let me see. My brother, I think... Uh, here's uh, Ethereum on the nine-day swing uh, from my brother. Yeah. So he's using, because he's using nine-day bars, he's taken two times the range stat, uh, plus a little bit, to come up with his minimum manageable risk box. Um, he's in at 838 Today it's at 979, so that's a dollar dollar forty-one on eight dollars and thirty-eight cents. So that's up uh, seven. He's up seventeen percent on that one. Yeah, I think this one is you know knock on wood and all that stuff, but this thing has after a long painful slide of over a year. That's 12 months of suffering from f 50 down to 5. And now it's back gone from 5 to uh, right around 10. So it's doubled. If that, if that doubled. only retraces half. Oh, yeah, that's that, a mass. That's, I, I, that's 250%. Yeah, that's a, so, the potential on uh, ETHE, knock on wood. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> My girls would be pretty happy with that. I told them to buy it and never sell it back when it was single digits around 550. So they're pretty happy with their dad. Um, okay, so that's that. Let's get to the... Um, Daily report. Stand by. I had this open. Dashboard number one. Thank you for your patience. Uh, bullish quiet. That's very favorable. Uh, above average and strongly overbought on the middle term. That's very good. Uh, risk on and the risk Z. Still at manageable levels. That's very positive. If we look at the easy ones, the min pains. Uh, Diamonds, Healthcare, McDonald's, Travelers, Walgreens. Still some room here inside the techs. Intel, Cisco, and Microsoft still have some room to go to get back to their 10-day high. I like that. And Caterpillar has room to go in that swing trade. That's really favorable. Dow Tactical, lots of dojis today. Uh, Apple. Tesla and Texas Instruments offering auto framers. Uh, breakout moves in DuPont, United Health, 
and a little one here in Travelers. That's all good. Uh, in the ETFs, uh, a couple, three auto framers, some nice big breakouts here in agriculture, emerging markets in the Dow, Brazil with that big move, Latin America. I'm almost starting to feel a little dumb for getting out of that that swing, but uh, I've been dumb before. Uh, I'd rather be outside the trade wishing I was in than in the trade wishing I was out. That's how I, f that's how I now feel about Brazil. But I'll be ready to get back in tomorrow. Uh, just a handful of, of uh, pinches. Tesla on a real serious pinch. That's why I think the upside has got possibles tomorrow. Daily squeezes in the usual fashion. Um, Godzilla trades. Uh, VIX and Microsoft here are both stealth Godzillas. And these three here in the S&P 500 also stealthy Godzillas. Uh, I'm looking at where I need to place a protective buy order for the VIX in case of a volatility spike. So there's no pattern on it yet. But if I go to... Um, VXX. I was talking with a couple of our money manager friends today. Um, yeah, this is this is my concern. Like, this is how VIX behaves. That you get this steady decay, and it bottoms out, and it just can't get any worse like that little doji, and then you get one, two, three days of spike that take it from 44 to 60 in three days. And then, then it starts to calm down, and then you get the decay. And all of this in here is great for swing trading on the long side with stocks because when volatility is on the decline, you get favorable conditions for swings. But then if you're not mindful, you get these periodic spikes, which um, erase a lot of that. And the longer the slide, the spikier those spikes, the sharper the pain of those spikes. So we haven't had one for a while. So to me, uh, I got to have this like right about 45 ready to ready to go. Just in case. Contingency order. Um, in the one day movers. Uh, only CARR gives us the double the double volatility we like to see. Uh, but even Johnson and Johnson initial volatility has become very quiet. There's our TC two uh, thousand generated auto framer. Uh, I'll just notice that um, we've had a pretty good run up lately, and so there's only a, a few items that are better than two to one on the uh, auto framer reward to risk for swing trading. But Apple, marijuana, clean energy, Texas Instruments, and Treasuries. I'm long the Treasuries and marijuana, and I'm ready to trade these other ones on a little bump. I like the PBW potential on the long side was up 2% today, so that could have actually some uh, another day of traction, if we can put it that way. Uh, MACD histogram, uh, four seasons, summer really dominating everywhere you look. 
uh, and then in the ETFs especially you can see broad-based recovery and joy this is why the cryptos are doing stealthily pretty well right now Ethereum and Bitcoin there's cliff that was the reason to hold it and that was the reason to hold caterpillar how strong those moves were today those were among the two strongest moves only Goldman was stronger and that's only marginally stronger than cliff so you know US Steel was not as strong a move so it cashed that one and then finally our uh, trading value chart which are the ones that have the strongest average range percentage and the strongest consistency in terms of the high frog quality number you multiply those together and you get the trading value ratio or the TV ratio and then we rank that from best so that gives you the the best candidates for short-term routine trading You know, Tesla, Marijuana, Clean Energy, NVIDIA, Devon Energy, Texas Instruments. Yeah. My brother was expressing shock and awe at ILF, so I suppose we need to go look at that. That'll probably have the same characteristics as um, Brazil. Yeah, it had that big, that big, same big break that uh, Brazil did. And if you recall, that was at 10R in Brazil from our swing. That little recovery and gap and then just closed very well. And it's above. So, you know, that's the, that's the next leg up in Brazil is to get to here. Uh, I mean, the next move in Latin America. And Brazil is about 40%. Of ILF, so a lot of that strength is coming directly from Brazil. So you can play that directly in Brazil. You might see a little spillover in Mexico as well. But uh, Brazil has more ground to make up. And I think it's probably coming from political influence as well. On the world stage, Brazil's becoming a bigger player. All right, that's everything we got for today. We'll get this published and processed, and we shall see you ready to rock tomorrow.